I'm a third year uh, PhD student. I'm a third year uh, PhD student here at the University of Rome to Brigado. And I will uh, talk, I will tell you about uh, gravitational wave physics from quantum field theory. Next, please. Next slide. Okay, so for simplicity, we consider a scalar perturbation in a curve, curve background. This is usually solved by a differential equation uh, like box of phi equal to zero. We also consider separable systems in which one can separate the radial and angular components of the, of the equation into two separate differential equations, which can then be cast into a canonical form and written in terms of this Q function. Uh, Q is usually the ratio between a fourth order polynomial and a second order polynomial square. Um, we're interested in the study of quasi normal modes, which correspond to gravitational waves leaking out of the geometry. To do so, we look for uh, solutions behaving as an outgoing wave at infinity and uh, an ingoing wave at the horizon. Uh, usually, these frequent, the frequencies related to these solutions are uh, computed using uh, uh, numerical continuous fraction methods or WKP inspired geodesic approximations in which uh, omega c is the classical uh, frequency of photons orbiting in what is called the photon sphere, um, while lambda is the Lyapunov exponent, which basically tells you how chaotic uh, these curved uh, orbits are these closed orbits are. Uh, recently, in uh, Amino, Amino Grass in Natsuda, uh, found out a connection between uh, uh, n, n equal to uh, super young myths theories and these black holes problems. Okay, so n, uh, a four dimensional n equals to uh, pure super young myths theories are completely defined in terms of a prepotential function, which gives you the Lagrangian which is this one. And uh, F is the basically the trace of tau and psi squared, where the tau is the complexified gauge coupling, while psi is the n equals to uh, vector superfield, which basically has a, a scalar component, a spinner component, field strength, and other fields. What happens is that when the scalar field acquires an expectation value, SU2 breaks to U1, and the correct uh, variable to uh, study the moduli space of this theory is this uh, u, which is the trace of phi squared, and is related to uh, the the prepotential through this relation. A, which is I mean u is classically a squared and is related to uh, f uh, using this relation. Uh, a squared is q times the derivative of f with respect to q. Q is a function of the complexified pitch coupling. Uh, Seberg and Witten showed that these theories can be, the dynamics of these theories can be uh, studied using curves, which define a torus with cycles alpha and beta, uh, give you the parameters of the field theory. So you have A, uh, AD, which is a dual variable. I won't go into further details about that, but basically it's the derivative of F with respect to A. And lambda is the Seberg and Witten differential. Next slide, please. Okay, if one introduces a deformed background on the gauge side, one also has to impose a commutation relation on this uh, torus manifold, uh, which basically uh, leads to a quantum version of the curve, which defines a differential equation of the second order for SU2, which can be cast in canonical form. So what we do is uh, basically we match this Q function uh, derived from Seberg and Witten with the Q function obtained from the black hole and, uh, and establish a dictionary. Then the energy spectrum of the solution we were looking for can be computed using by quantizing one of the cycles, for example, AD in the case we are considering. Uh, so, okay. Okay. Um, okay, here I present the dictionary between Resner, Nostrum and black holes and SU2 gauge theories with flavor, because in general, one has to consider gauge theories with flavors, in particular with three flavors. M, uh, capital M is the mass of the black hole, capital Q is the charge of the black hole, K is the, K squared is the separation constant uh, appearing in the differential equation when we separate it. And M1 and 2 and 3 are the masses of the hypers. Omega is the frequency of the uh, quasi-normal mode solution. Next slide, please. So what we did is uh, to com uh, compute these quasi-normal modes using 
the geodesic approximation, the numerical approximation, and also the Sabeke-Witten method, and found a striking, striking accordance. Um, here we set m equals to one, k squared equals to six, and q runs from zero uh, m to 0 0.9 m. Uh, okay, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Well, thank you very much, Alfredo. I hope um, you were able to understand something. There will be questions later in the discussion, so I'm sure okay. that then it will become much, everything will become more clear. Okay. So our next speaker, Martin Parlanti. Where are you, Martin? Okay. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. And, and uh, uh, just a quick question, Pedro, for some reason, the, the speakers cannot turn on their video. Is it that's how we want it, or maybe we want to see their faces? No, I guess uh, I, I, it was not the original. In principle, idea. they should be able now. Okay, Mar Martin, can you, can you turn on your video? No, I can't. No. Uh, yeah, they uh, can't because it says it says that the the host has uh, stopped the video yes. or something. So now you me... should be able. Sorry. Again. Okay, let's try again, Martin. Yes, good, yes. good. I'd like to see the faces. Okay, cool. So then our next speaker is Martin Parlante, and uh, his title is Deep in Elastic Scattering from String Theory. So okay. Five minutes good afternoon, start. everybody. Uh, I'm Martin Parlante, and uh, thanks uh, to organize for this opportunity. My talk is about Deep in Elastic Scattering from uh, String Theory. Thanks. Okay, first of all, uh, we have in this picture the process of the IS. Uh, we have the initial lepton, for example, an ele electron, uh, which uh, exchanges a virtual photon with momentum Q that prove the interior of the hadron, which uh, have momentum P. In this process, uh, we define a European parameter, X, uh, which is proportional to the uh, Q squared, where Q is the momentum of the virtual photon, and your K parameter is between zero and one, the physical range, where X equal one is uh, elastic uh, scatter. We take the limit Q much larger than lambda, lambda is the confinement scale, and we have also the differential cross section, which is proportional to the con contraction of two tensors, W mu nu and L mu nu, where W mu nu is the hadron tensor and Le L mu nu is the lepton tensor. Uh, lepton tensor is described by perturbative quantum electrodynamics. And we can uh, determine the tensor structure of W mu nu by symmetry, for example, with parity uh, symmetry. And in the case of hadron, uh, if the hadron have spin zero, we have the W mu nu given by this, where F1 and F2 are the structural function. Next, please. Okay. We have a relationship between the, the, the IS process and quantum scattering. Uh, through the optic theorem, which say that the mole square of the amplitude in the IS process is proportional to the imaginary part of quantum scattering. And uh, we have also a relationship between the structure function in the IS and the structure function F tilde in quantum scattering. And uh, also we have the uh, hadron tensor, but in uh, quantum scattering where Yimu and Hinu are uh, are electromagnetic currents inside the hadron. And we obtain the same form of F1 tilde and F2 tilde. Next. Okay. Now, in the range where the scattering amplitudes of the superstring theory are suitable to calculate the VIS process, an effective Lagrangian is contracted and the following Feynman diagrams are derived. For example, in the, in the case of in the glue walls, we have a the S channel, the, the U channel, T channel, and the contact diagram. In the S channel, for example, we have the wavy lines are the dilatons, and the dash lines are, uh, uh, sorry, wavy lines and gravitons, and dash line are dilatons. Okay, next. Okay, from string theory, we have the uh, scattering amplitude, the amplitude of 
for closed stream, even by this, uh, times the connected terms, where this connected term can be written as the product of two open string connected terms, even by this. And, and uh, it remains to perform the calculation at uh, higher orders in genus expansion from string theory. Uh, Polchinski and Strassler uh, obtained a structure function in the case of the glue walls in the Riemann sphere. And uh, Martin Bellinger and collaborator in the case of uh, variants and mensons. And uh, uh, I will work in the case of genus one, uh, namely in the case of Torus from a uh, string theory. Next. Okay. Uh, now, the main contribution, the T channel, but in type 2B supergravity calculation for the uh, incident glue world, which is spin zero, we have the boundary of the space, ADS5 cross the uh, highest sphere, for example, and we have two uh, gravity photons. And uh, in supergravity, we have a uh, to extract functions uh, given by these two, one and two. Okay, next. Okay, the longitudinal extract function is written by this, and uh, in supergravity, uh, the longitudinal extract function is given by this, where uh, we note the limit q square much larger than lambda square, and n much larger to lambda, and lambda much larger than one, uh, do not commute, yes? So the physical limit is one in which we first uh, take Q square much larger than lambda square, and then uh, this limit. Uh, so the dominant contribution corresponds to the graph uh, showing the figure, which involves the chain of two intermediate particles in Compton scale. Thanks. Thank you, Martin. Thanks. Okay, uh, our next speaker, Marcelo. Marcelo, Hello. are you there? Yes, uh, I cannot uh, turn on my video. Can you give me? Uh, okay, so who can uh, give Marcelo permission to turn on his video, yeah, please? please? Who was doing that? Now uh, you can. No. Yes, okay, yeah, now we you. can see you, Marcelo. Okay, Great. hello. So Marcelo will talk about new topological leaf sheet black holes in Einstein, Young, Mills, Dilatons with rich thermodynamics properties. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity. I will talk about new topological leaf sheet black holes in Einstein, Young, Mills. Uh, and uh, this is a work in progress in collaboration with Fabrizio Gamfora and Julio Oliva. Uh, next, please. Okay. Uh, a motivation to study Lipschitz space-time comes from an extension of ADS-CFT duality that uh, was conjectured by Kashru, Liu, and Mulligan in 2008 that uh, a strongly interacting non-relativistic theory admits a dual description in terms of a weakly coupled gravity theory in one dimension uh, more, whose metrics asymptotes to the uh, metric in the second equation, where Z is the dynamical exponent, and L is the Lipschitz uh, scale. Uh, next, please. Okay, we want to find asymptotically Lipschitz black holes in uh, einstein jang mills dilaton theory for uh, SU2 gauge group defined by the first equation. And for the answer, we, go, uh, we consider an static spherically symmetric uh, space time and a scalar field that depends on the radial coordinates. For the gauge field, we use the Meron ansat proposed by Alfaro Fubini and Forlan in 1976. And this ansatz means that the gauge field is proportional to a pure gauge configuration. And you can see that this ansatz uh, only works in the non-avariant sector of the, of the theory. Otherwise, the field strength uh, will uh, vanish. Okay, uh, next, please. Um, okay, it, it was found at least uh, three family of potentials that allow the construction on, of analytic solution uh, in a closed form. Uh, the first one is given in the first equation and is characterized by uh, three independent constants, Xi, Z, and L. Uh, the solution associated to this potential is given in the last three equations, um, where mu is an integration constant related to the mass or the energy content of the solution. And the metric asymptotically is a topological uh, Lipschitz space time. Uh, 
topological because uh, we change the plane by a sphere. Yeah, yeah okay. okay. Um, now we, uh, I will talk about uh, black holes. So in this uh, family of solution with z equal to three half, we have um, two remaining constants, xi that is appearing in the action, and uh, mu that is an, um, an integration constant in the horizontal axis. So uh, depending on the value of xi and mu, uh, we plot in different color the number of horizons that the, the solution uh, has. So uh, for example, in the red region, uh, there are black holes with three horizons. And from the Ben Ross diagram, we can see that this uh, uh, can be interpreted as a black hole inside a black hole. Uh, and, uh, and the extremal case of these black holes uh, are in the boundary of the red region and has two horizons. Uh, on the other hand, uh, um, there are black holes with two horizons, but the causal structure is uh, similar to the rest and not strong one, okay, in, uh, for negative mu. And uh, it is interesting that uh, for a suitable choose of oxide, uh, I mean, uh, setting the theory, we can have uh, all of these uh, black holes. Okay, next, please. Now, the second potential is defined by V2 that admits uh, uh, the first potential as a particular case when uh, the red V is equal to zero. Okay, and you can see that the V also appear in the in the dilatonic coupling in the in the action. Okay, so consider the value of the parameters given in the last equation. Um, at the picture to the right of the of the screen, we see the parametric plot between the temperature and the free energy um, as a function of the horizon radius, and uh, we can see that there is a phase transition in this case. And we use the extremal black hole that is uh, in this family as a background to compute the, the mass of the solution. That is the red line in the, in the blot. Um, okay, next, please. So the last potential belongs in a different family than the previous one and is characterized by two constants, psi and eta. And this potential is interesting because we uh, setting psi and eta as the last line, we can, uh, it is possible to embed this solution in a truncation of SU2 times SU2 gauge supergravity proposed by Friedman and Schwartz. And uh, the metric in this case is given by the last equation. And uh, this metric also has uh, have been recovered, uh, sorry, has been obtained by Clem, but uh, he restricts himself to analyze the abelian sector of the theory. And therefore it's interesting to study if our solution uh, is uh, supersymmetric or not. Uh, thank you very much. That's it. Thank you, Marcelo. And uh, let's see, our next speaker is Anthony. Where are you, Anthony? Can you hear me? Can you yes. see me? Yes, now we can hear you and we can see you. So the next speaker is Anthony Can Canasas. And his uh, title is non planar Coll Corrections to Wilson Loop Correlators in N equal four super young males. Okay, Anthony. Thank you. Uh, my talk is based on an idea started by Correa, Trancanelli, Silva, and Faraji, and now I'm joining them. Uh, next. So uh, I'm going to begin this talk by telling you something most of you already know. So. In the ADS CFT correspondence proposed by Maldasena, one describes uh, type to be super strains on ADS five crosses five in terms of n equals four super young meals on four dimensions. We can match the string tension and the string coupling with the CFT parameters, as you can see. There is a matching between the global symmetries and we also know that there is a correspondence between CFT observables and those of the gravity side. Next, the relevant observables that we want to describe using the correspondence are the Wilson loops. As you can see, not only the coupling to the gauge field, but also a, a coupling to the scholars enters the game with a unit vector n. The holographic dual of the background expectation value of a Wilson loop is given by the amplitude that you can see on the left 
So it, it is a sum over all the possible worksheets ending on the loop. In the classical limit, this reduce, reduces to e to the minus the classical action, which turns out to be e to the square root of lambda in the case of the circle. That minimal worksheet is ABS2 and can be parameterized by a row variable, as you can see in the last equation. Next. The circular Wilson loop can be described exactly by a matrix model. In fact, Drucker and Gross show that for large n and large lambda, it gives uh, that expression. Uh, so here we can see the leading contribution, e to the square root of lambda, plus the first non planar correction. This correction will be different in the case of the correlator. Next. Uh, the, the string amplitude with one handle reduces to a supergravity amplitude that it can be integrated in the Gaussian approximation. So we have some kind of vertex propagator, vertex extractor. Uh, this gives uh, lambda over n squared times some number. And this is because each vertex gives a, a square root of lambda factor and the propagator gives a one over n square factor. Uh, of course, one should take care of numerical factors. So for example, for the dilaton, we have that its propagator gives uh, that factor. And the vertex is obtained from the expansion of the dilaton coupling in the number of action. actions. Next. Here, we can see how the handle contribution reduces to a supergravity mode exchange. Next. And this is the supergravity mode exchange. Next. Now, for the correlator, we consider coincident circles, but with the opposite orientations, and the unit vector n with opposite directions. Uh, the connected correlator can be computed with the matrix model, and we get the CFT prediction for the supergravity mode exchange. The worship dual to those Wilson loops are coincident in ADS5, but are located at antipodal points in S5. Next. Um, for the single Wilson loop case, when the supergravity mode exchange is in between the same worship, we have UV divergences arising for coincident points. So the UV cutoff associated to the string length should account for the additional square root of lambda factor. Next. But for the correlator, the supergravity mode exchange is in between disconnected worships. So we don't have that problem. These color points are the Antipodal points in uh, S5. Next. Uh, this 10 dimensional propagator can be written as a sum over mode propagators times sp spherical harmonics on S5. The mode propagators are given in terms of the hypergeometric function, and we are, we are using the chordal distance as the relevant variable. Next. Uh, so the mode, mode propagators reduces uh, to that expression. So, so now uh, we can zoom over, over all the, the mode propagators and, and that's the integral for, for the dilaton exchange. Next, and that, that's the dilaton contribution. Similarly, one should work out the contribution from the modes associated to fluctuations of the metric and the Carl Ramon Phillips form. For instance, for the fluctuations of the metric, one should make the expansion in the number go to action to identify the vertices properly. Thank you. Okay, so that's the end of your talk, Anthony, right? Yeah, okay. So I. I want to thank all of you. This is the end of the Gong Show. I want to thank uh, all of you guys that gave a talk in the Gong Show. We all know how hard it is to give such a short talk and you all did a great job. And if there are questions, if something was not clear, you will, there will be an opportunity for everybody to ask us questions when Guille hosts with, <laughs> chairs the discussion session. So thank you guys. It was a great job. Okay. so.